Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up, everyone? This is Yarn from Orange Juice. All values are based on tournament standards. There are two new legendary cards. The log is available in Builder's Workshop and will only cost two elixir. It's an obstacle that has 3.9 tiles in width. It's the first spell card that's a legendary. Since it's a spell, it can't be stopped or destroyed. It rolls a distance of 9.6 tiles. It has just enough range to snipe an arena tower from the bridge. And it can snipe the king's tower after the lane is open. Just like every spell, it can only deal 40% damage to crown towers. In terms of damage, the log is similar to arrows. It kills anything weaker than archers in one shot. This includes killing the princess. The difference with arrows is that the log is limited to ground units and can't target air troops. The log's knockback has as much influence as fireball and bowler, knocking back small and medium sized units. It doesn't knock back large units. Regardless of the amount of troops it rolls over, it'll continue to roll the full distance. With its knockback mechanic, it can separate large troops from medium troops to break their synergy. An example would be splitting the prince from the dark prince, since only the dark prince gets knocked back. For such a low cost, this is an incredible spell. You can use the knockback offensively to force units to re-aggro. From a defensive perspective, you can force medium units off of your arena tower with a knockback. The barbarians were knocked off the tower and targeted the Valkyrie. This works with the bowler too. You can even defend against the hog that's already locked onto your tower. If your building was out of rotation, your log can knock the hog off the tower and cycle your deck. The lumberjack is a legendary card. He costs 4 elixir. He deals 100 more damage than the knight, but has just under a thousand health at level 1. He's a glass cannon. His health is relatively low, but his damage is very high. Upon death, he drops his purple juice. When you level up the lumberjack, only his health and damage increase. Rage stats remain the same at all levels. The lumberjack is pretty fragile at 900 health. He has to make it closer to the arena tower or else the rage won't reach the melee troops. A rage spell costs 3 elixir, and the lumberjack costs 4 elixir. It's only 1 extra elixir to deploy a physical unit that can cast rage spell. The difference is that the lumberjack needs to be addressed or he'll get in a lot of chip damage. Once your opponent has expended elixir to counter him, you can send in other cards. Whereas with a rage spell, your opponent doesn't have to worry about countering a physical unit. In this gameplay, Jiro forced me to expend elixir to defend against her lumberjack. Jiro knew he was going to die, so she sent in minions to benefit from the residual rage. If the lumberjack and the roll giant are played, it's best to address the lumberjack at your tower. The rage will just be out of range of the roll giant. The rage lasts 8 seconds, so you can send in cheap units to chip away. Anything behind the lumberjack needs to be addressed because once he dies, they'll be raged, especially cheap units like spear goblins. The Lumberjack has huge potential for offensive plays, but it's very situational. But, he's consistently very effective as a defensive kamikaze unit. It sets you up for a really strong counter-attack. Especially considering that rage affects arena towers, the tower gets a nice boost. Typically, your opponent will send in the Lumberjack first with the intent of having him die early, with support troops in the back that will benefit from his rage. When you're aware that the Lumberjack is being sent in for a push, you can separate the troops out of range from the rage by pulling Jack to the center and the support troops upwards. The Lumberjack is as dynamic as the Miner. There's so many ways to play him. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more quality OJ.